In this video, we will go over how to draw lines and circles. Let's start by opening the line toolbar and the circle toolbar. Now let's check our snap settings by right clicking the snap icon near the bottom right of the workspace. Notice that I have vertex, midpoint, center, and quadrant all checked. We may use these later, but for now let's check no snap near the top. This will disable snaps for the time being. After checking no snap, click OK to return to the TC workspace. OK, now let's look at the line toolbar. The line toolbar contains tools to draw lines, polylines, and polygons. Let's go over each tool in order, starting with the line tool. Lines are typically drawn with a series of mouse clicks. For example, you can click once to start the line, then again to end the line, and if you hold down the shift key, it will force the lines to be orthogonal. Be sure to release the mouse after every click. Clicking and dragging is ineffective and can create unwanted results. You can also input specific data to create a line. This is usually done by clicking once to start the line, then tabbing into the inspector bar and entering the length and angle. Another method is to input the coordinates of each endpoint into the XY fields near the bottom right corner of the workspace. Let's try it. While holding down the shift key, hit tab. This should put you in the X field. Let's input 0 for X, hit the tab key, and input 0 for Y, then hit enter. If you move your mouse around, you will notice that the first endpoint is anchored to 0, 0. Now let's enter the second point. Shift tab into the coordinate fields, input 4 for X, 2 for Y, then hit enter. You should now have a line on your screen. If you zoom to extents and look at the rulers along the left and top of the drawing area, you will see that the placement of the lines and points matches the coordinates we have entered. Let's delete this line and talk about the polyline tool. The polyline tool behaves the same as the line tool except that an additional line segment is created each time you finish the previous segment. Let's give it a try. Choose the polyline tool and start creating line segments. Feel free to draw segments by entering values in the length and angle fields or coordinate fields. You finish a polyline by double clicking your final endpoint or by right-clicking and choosing Finish. There are some other options you can use while creating polylines, which can be accessed from the local menu or inspector bar. Let's try a couple. Start by drawing a single line segment. Next, right-click and choose Arc Segment from the local menu. This option will create an arc by picking two endpoints. Direction of the arc segment can be changed by choosing Direction from the local menu. And if you make a mistake, you can choose one step back from the local menu or inspector bar. After creating an arc segment or two, switch back to line segment. Add a couple more line segments, then right-click and choose Close. Now we have a closed polyline, and any closed polyline or polygon can be filled. Let's select the polyline we just created and choose a fill pattern and a fill color from the property toolbar. I will pick solid for the pattern and red for the color. I will also choose a line weight of 0.05 so you can see the difference between the line color and the fill color. Time to move on to polygons. By default, regular polygons are created by defining the center point and radius of an invisible inscribed circle. Polygons can also be created by defining the radius circumscribed to a circle or by picking the length of the edges. Other options include rounding the corners and of course changing the number of sides. Let's try it out by creating an equilateral triangle and defining it by the length of its sides. With the regular polygon tool selected, tab or move your mouse down into the inspector bar, enter 3 for the side, and choose the edge option. Then, click once in the drawing area to define the first point, then holding the shift key to force orthogonal, drag to the left or right, then click again to define the second point. While this does create an equilateral triangle, the geometry is not constrained so we could quickly change this into an isosceles triangle by selecting the triangle, grabbing the bounding box near the top, and dragging it up to extend two of the sides. The irregular polygon tool is pretty straightforward and behaves similarly to the polyline tool but differs in that the entity created is always closed. There is also an option for rounded corners. The rectangle tool is used by either defining two corners by mouse click or by clicking once to define the first corner then entering the length and width into the inspector bar. The rotated rectangle tool defines the first side by length and angle, then the second side by distance. Let's check it out. We can try out the rounded corner option here too. 
With the rotated rectangle tool selected, first click somewhere in the drawing area. Then let's look down in the inspector bar. First choose the rounded corner option, then enter 4 for size A, an angle of 45 degrees, 6 for size B, and a radius of 0.25, then hit enter to complete the operation. The rest of the line tools use existing entities to work off of and require these entities to be present in the drawing. So first we will go over some of the circle tools, then circle back and go over the rest of the line tools. Both circle center and point and concentric circles work similar to the regular polygon tool. You first define the center point, then the radius can be defined with either a mouse click or data entry. The concentric circle tool keeps the same center point while different radii are used. Double point circle places two points from the circumference of the circle defining its diameter. Skipping ahead a few, triple point circle constructs a circle by placing three points along its circumference, as if circumscribed to an equilateral triangle. Now let's place several entities on screen so we can go over the rest of the line and circle tools. Go ahead and use a variety of tools. I will use the snaps to line them up, but feel free just to eyeball them. Be sure to include at least one row of four polygons and two rows of four circles with these entity types fairly close to each other, like I have on screen now. Before I move on, I will be sure to turn the snaps off. Now let's take a look at the remaining line tools. The perpendicular line tool uses an existing line segment to work off of, with an option limiting the placement of the line to the line segment selected. Just like the perpendicular line, the parallel line tool uses an existing segment to work off of. By default, the line will be the same length as the selected segment. That option can be turned off in the local menu or inspector bar. Tangent arc point places a line tangent to a circle or arc. This line is drawn from its midpoint, then placed on the circle or arc. Tangent to circle or arc places a line tangent to a circle or arc. However, this operation can start anywhere in the drawing and finishes with the selection of a circle or an arc. Let's try this one out. With tangent to circle or arc selected, choose a point outside the circle you want the line to be drawn to. Then select that circle. Notice that the line is indeed tangent to the circle we have selected. Tangent from circle or arc behaves just the opposite with the selection of the circle or arc coming first and the second endpoint being placed anywhere outside of the circle. Tangent to two arcs places a line between two circles or arcs being tangent to both. Notice how the side of the circle I select affects the placement of the line. Minimal distance line can be used on a variety of entities. A common use case for this tool would be connecting closed entities for a flowchart. Try connecting one of the polygons to two of the circles. Then choose the bisecting line tool. Now select the two lines you have just drawn. Notice how this new line segment starts where the two lines would eventually meet? You can finish this operation with a mouse click or by entering the length into the inspector bar and pressing enter. The second option for the bisecting line tool allows you to select three points, with the second point being where the new line will start. Now on to the rest of the circle tools. To use circle tangent to arc or curve, first select the entity you would like the circle to be tangent to, then click again to define its radius. A third click will place the circle along the circle. Circle tangent to line works about the same, but with the circle being tangent to a line. Circle tangent to three arcs allows for the constructed circle to be tangent to either side of the selected circle. This is controlled by clicking to the inside or outside of the circle. Circle tangent to three entities can be used on arcs or line segments. This can also be used to create a circle of a specific radius tangent to two arcs. You do this by first choosing the two arcs you would like the circle to be tangent to, then inputting a value into the radius field in the inspector bar and completing the operation by hitting the enter key. And that's about it for the line and circle tools. For more great videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have not already, download the latest version of TurboCAD from TurboCAD.com today.